Rikers Island is one of the largest correctional facilities in the world. It can hold up to 25,000 inmates at a time and often uh, as many as 100,000 people go through that prison system, that jail system in a year. The jail was founded in the mid-1930s. Uh, it replaced an earlier facility on what is today Roosevelt Island. That facility was notoriously corrupt, brutal, unsanitary, ineffective, and Rikers unfortunately has many of those same qualities today. The facility has always been beset by problems. It was built basically on landfill. Garbage, ashes, and construction debris was added to the island by prisoner labor over many decades. Uh, in the early years, the island was overrun with rats. There were constant underground fires that would erupt out into the open. Terrible air quality. And many of those problems have persisted over all these years. Rikers Island is a jail rather than a prison, so it serves two functions. One is that it holds people awaiting trial in the various courthouses in New York City, uh, the state courthouses. And second, it's a place where people who've been convicted of minor crimes serve sentences of up to a year. Initially, Rikers Island was just used to house prisoners serving short sentences and people awaiting trial were held in neighborhood facilities near the borough courts in the 1970s, the holding of pretrial detainees begins to shift over to Rikers Island. And so now the majority of people at Rikers are there awaiting trial and haven't been convicted of anything. And yet they're subjected to gang violence, crumbling infrastructure, bad air quality, et cetera. In the 1990s, there was a big crime and disorder problem in the city, and the city's decision under Mayor Giuliani was to address those problems through basically mass low-level arrests and incarceration. So the number of misdemeanor arrests skyrockets, and those people end up in Rikers Island, usually for incredibly short periods of time. The average stay at Rikers Island is 10 days. These are not people who are a intense long-term threat to the city of New York. They're people who ride their bike on the sidewalk, jump the turnstile, and engage in other kind of minor disorderly activities and low-level marijuana charges. But the city decided that the best way to try to end that behavior was to cycle hundreds of thousands of people through Rikers Island and the court system. This created an incredible burden on the administration of Rikers Island, but it also created a kind of culture of criminality, if you will, as hundreds of thousands of people get churned through these systems where they're exposed to gangs, where they're exposed to other people engaged in more serious criminality. And it also sets up this very deep tension between the police and communities where this quality of life enforcement is widespread. So the police become not just agents of public safety in the minds of the public, they become this agency of harassment because the vast majority of people who are caught up in these low-level arrests are not engaged in serious criminality. They're victims of a campaign of restoring order through mass criminalization. The system has never really recovered from the age of Giuliani. Today, you have in parts of the jail basically corrections officers working with gangs to manage the population in totally corrupt ways, what's known as the program, this is the system that Khalif Browder was confronted with when he was awaiting trial. No one epitomizes the failure of Rikers Island more than Khalif Browder, who was arrested for allegedly stealing a backpack. He was subjected to violence from guards, violence from other inmates, even though he was under 18. And in the end, he spent two years in solitary confinement and eventually kills himself as a result of the trauma of that experience. Recently, Preet Bharara, who was then the attorney for the Southern District of New York, issued a scathing report that said that there's a pervasive culture of violence 
that guards are working with prisoners to extort money and favors out of prisoners. Sexual violence is widespread, sometimes involving corrections officers. Contraband is smuggled in easily and on a constant basis, whether it's drugs, weapons, outside food, money, etc. 75% of the weapons confiscated at Rikers are made out of crumbling infrastructure. Mayor de Blasio comes into office and is immediately confronted by this Department of Justice report. And so Mayor de Blasio has been under pressure not to fix up Rikers Island and to make it more humane, but instead to close it down, to develop two kinds of alternatives. One is to dramatically reduce the number of people who are being driven through this system in the first place. And the other is to take the few people who really are a serious public safety threat and bring them closer to communities in smaller facilities that have more services embedded within them. By breaking up the population at Rikers, putting them in smaller facilities near where they live, we can also separate out the population that's awaiting trial from the population that's been convicted. And this could break up some of that culture of violence, the lack of oversight, the lack of accountability. And also, you won't have this deep entrenched culture of large groups of people together where you really have the inmates running the prison.